The ramp where airliners park to load and unload passengers and cargo is a very dangerous, crowded, noisy, busy, and slippery place to work. And if you don't follow basic safety protocols, working on the ramp can be absolutely deadly. The NTSB has just released the preliminary report on the very sad loss of a ramp worker at the Montgomery Regional Airport back on 31 December. Let's check it out. Before we get into the actual report, let's review some basics that will help us understand what's going on within this report. The aircraft involved in this incident is an Embraer ERJ-170-200LR aircraft. This aircraft is powered by two General Electric CF-34 engines. Each of these engines is capable of putting out upwards of 20,000 pounds of thrust each at maximum takeoff power. Like any other airliner, the power of that one engine has to be powerful enough to lift this aircraft at maximum gross weight at V1 rotate speed and safely fly it around the pattern on one engine at that gross weight. Also, like most airliners, it has a thing called an APU or auxiliary power unit in the back of the aircraft that provides additional electrical power and oftentimes additional bleed air or, and or hydraulic power to the aircraft. These aircraft can be placarded to be operated with the APU in op via a system called the MEL or minimum equipment list for that aircraft. In addition to this auxiliary power unit located over here, on the front left side of the aircraft is a plug where you can plug in external power once you are on the ground to provide electrical power to the aircraft when the engines are shut down. Right here in front of the number two or the right engine, these numbers, remember these engines are numbered number one, number two, from left to right from the pilot's viewpoint. Right here in front of the number two engine is one of the two cargo doors on the ERJ aircraft. When working on the ramp, most of these different jet engines have a 15 foot hazard zone or ingestion zone in front of the jet engine while it's operating. And this ingestions, these engines, even at idle power, produce a tremendous amount of low pressure in front of the engine and this low pressure increases exponentially the closer you get to the front of the engine so if you are seven feet away from the engine instead of 15 feet the the suction from that engine is not double it's at least four times the amount of suction to get sucked into that engine and it is powerful powerful enough to lift you right up off of your feet even at idle power Every airliner, in fact, every airplane has a red rotating beacon to signify when the engines are running. And this is especially important on the ramp because, the, again, the ramp is so noisy. Sometimes you cannot distinguish the difference between an engine running and the APU engine running. And so the red rotating beacon is your best indication to tell you when the engines are shut down. And it's on the pilot's checklist to not shut down that red rotating beacon until the engines are shut down. Now onto the report. This report was generated by the NTSB primarily from the video evidence gathered by the security camera that's a required piece of equipment to be on all of these airport ramps. On December 31st, 2022 at about 1539 Eastern Standard Time, an Embraer 170 airplane, November 264, November, November, was involved in an accident while parked at the gate with one engine up running at the Montgomery Regional Airport, Montgomery, Alabama. The 63 passengers and crew aboard were uninjured. One ramp personnel was fatally injured. The flight was operating under the provisions of Title 14 FAR Part 121, that means airline operations, as a regularly scheduled domestic passenger flight from DFW to MGM, Montgomery Regional Airfield. The flight was operated by Envoy Air Inc. doing business as American Eagle Flight 3408 with an inoperative auxiliary power unit or APU. The flight crew reported that after an uneventful flight, they elected to leave both engines running for the required two minute engine cool down period. That's a limitation on the CF-34 engines to cool them down two minutes after landing. And this is a factor at what we call these outstations. Montgomery is what we call an outstation versus the main base at Dallas. 
the big airports like Dallas, the taxi time is so long that this two minute limitation usually does not come into play. But at outstations like Montgomery, the time it takes to land and get to the gate is often very short. So they got they want they have to leave both engines running until this two minute cooldown limitation is met. As the airplane approached the gate, three ramp agents were present, but clear of the safety area. After stopping the aircraft and setting the parking brake, the captain gave the hand signal to connect the airplane to ground power. As he was shutting down the number two engine, the right engine, the door cargo forward open engine indicating and crew alerting system, that's the ICAST system, that's the, the system right in front of the um, pilots that tells you what's going on with the aircraft. The door cargo forward open message appeared indicating that the far forward cargo door had opened. This is with both engines operating and he's just now getting around to shutting down the number two engine. There, there should be no opening of any cargo doors until both engines are shut down. There should be nobody entering the safety zone until both engines are shut down and the red rotating beacon is turned off. The first officer, FO, opened his cockpit window to inform the ramp agent that the engines were still operating. He's, we would have to be yelling out the window. The captain then made a brief announcement asking the passengers to remain seated until the seatbelt sign had been turned off. He then relayed his intentions to the first officer, the first officer's in the right seat, captain's in the left seat, that the seatbelt sign would stay illuminated until they had connected to ground power and could shut down the number one or left engine. Remember, the APU is in op, it's placarded in, in op. Everybody knows it, we'll get to that here in the report. That information is forwarded to the station and pre-briefed before the aircraft arrives. So they need to keep at least one engine operating until they get ground power established on the aircraft. Otherwise, they'll lose all the lights on the aircraft. You'll end up back on the, down to the emergency lights for the passengers. Immediately thereafter, he saw a warning light illuminate and the airplane shook violently, followed by the immediate automatic shutdown of the number one engine. Unsure of what had occurred, he extinguished the emergency lights and shut off both batteries before leaving the flight deck to investigate. Video surveillance captured the accident sequence and showed the airplane being marshaled to the gate. After the nose wheel was chalked, the ramp agent marshaling the airplane walked toward the forward cargo door located on the right side and near the front of the airplane. He shouldn't have done that. He should have stood there and waited until both engines were shut down and he needs to signal the rest of the crew when that has occurred. Simultaneously, another ramp agent appeared walking toward the back of the airplane with an orange safety cone where she disappeared from view. A third ramp agent located near the right wingtip could be seen gesturing with his hand toward the back of the airplane. Meanwhile, a fourth ramp agent knelt near the airplane's nose wheel. The ramp agent from the back of the airplane reappeared and began walking away from the airplane and towards the left wingtip where she disappeared from the camera's field of view. The marshaller could be seen backing away from the airplane's open forward cargo door and the ramp agent from the back of the airplane reappeared walking along the leading edge of the left wing and directly in front of the number one engine. She was sub subsequently pulled off of her feet and into the operating engine. Throughout the course of the accident, the airplane's upper rotating beacon light appeared to be illuminated. The ground crew reported that a safety briefing was held about 10 minutes before the airplane arrived at the gate. A second safety huddle was held shortly before the airplane arrived at the gate to reiterate that the engines would remain running until ground power was connected because the APU is placarded in op. And this is sent automatically through the maintenance system and this information is automatically transferred to the ramp before the aircraft arrives. It was also discussed that the airplane should not be approached and the diamond of safety cones should not be set until the engines were off, spooled down, and the airplane's rotating beacon light had been extinguished by the flight crew. 
So they briefed it twice and then immediately violated their own briefing. One ramp agent located near the right wingtip stated that he observed another ramp agent approach the back of the aircraft to set the rear safety cone. He observed her almost fall over from the ex- engine's exhaust while he attempted to alert her to stay back and wait for the engines to be shut down. He also stated that he observed the airplane's upper and lower rotating beacons were illuminated. Another ramp agent stated that after chalking the nose wheel of the airplane, he observed another ramp agent approach the forward cargo door and he knelt to wave him off. He then observed another ramp agent about to set the safety cone at the rear of the airplane and he yelled and waved her off as the number one engine was still running. He observed her as she began to move away from the airplane before he turned to lower the cord for the ground power. The ground power cord is located right there on the side of the jet bridge on the left side nose of the aircraft. Shortly thereafter, he heard a bang and the engines, the engine shut down. The American Eagle Ground Operations Manual, Revision 3, dated 13 July 2022, states in part, to keep employees alive and aircraft intact, you will never approach an aircraft to position ground equipment next to an aircraft or open a cargo bin door until the engines, both engines, are shut down and the rotating beacons are turned off, except when conducting an approved single-engine turn jet blast and ingestion zones jet engines spin with powerful speed and are extremely dangerous until spooled down the area in front of the engine is called the ingestion zone the ingestion zone for all types of aircraft is 15 feet you must never enter the ingestion zone until the engine has spooled down spool down the engines must be spooled down before entering the ingestion zone this can take between 30 to 60 seconds depending on aircraft type This applies to both wing and fuselage tail-mounted engines. You must wait until you can clearly see the individual fan blades before entering the ingestion zone. Here's some more details on the report. It would be good to know the temperature during the day and what kind of clothing everybody was wearing. If you wear large, baggy, loose clothing in cold temperatures, that's that's gonna suck you into the engine even easier. The NTSB did not travel to the scene of the accident. All of this was done, all this investigation was done based off of the videotape and the testimony from the rampers. So that explains what happened, but we don't know why this happened. And I'm going to put these questions that the investigators are going to have. I want to put this out to a general discussion in the comments section from those of you that are operating these flights what is what is going and you rampers out there what is going on on the ramp are is there pressure to get these aircraft in and out on time is there pressure by uh, ramp management to shortcut these safety mechanisms in place or is it common for individual rampers to shortcut these safety measures just in order to get the job done quicker or more efficiently What's the general trend out there? ERJ pilots, are you seeing a trend where the cargo doors are being opened before the engines are shut down? Are you hearing multiple reports of this or is this a one-off event? This aircraft was a few minutes behind schedule and did have a fairly tight turn time to turn around, unload the passengers and cargo, reload the aircraft and service it and get it out of there. The tracking and timing of airline operations is primarily tracked through the setting and releasing of the parking brake. When you set and release the parking brake, that's what starts and stops the clock, and that determines a lot of things in the entire operation. But oftentimes, these setting and releasing of the parking brake times can be altered by the opening or closing of a door, because if the parking brake is released and you open a door, for example, well, you're either on the ground or you're not on the ground. You can't have one or both. So for ERJ pilots, does the opening of the cargo door stop the clock on the aircraft before the parking brake is set? 
We simply cannot allow the pressures of the clock, the pressures of the timing of the operation to circumvent, to shortcut any of these safety measures that have been long in place with these airline operations. And you, you cannot have a momentary lapse of situational awareness on the ramp as a ramper, just like a, a pilot, you have to be on the job and in the moment 110% of the time. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.